welcome to Morning Coffee and Mimosas. I'm Christina. And I'm Joe. And we are a father-daughter duo. We come here Sunday mornings. You can come here anytime you please. And we banter about life, about business, and we do it over coffee and mimosas. We hope you get some value out of our show today and keep tuning in. Welcome, listeners. Welcome. Hi, Dad. Hi, Christina. So today, we are going to talk about a topic that goes off of a previous episode that we shared. It was episode seven, I believe, if my count is right. I think you're right. If anybody is interested in checking that out. It was an episode on motivation and how to sustain it. So this week, we're going to talk about attitude. Perfect. And we've all met somebody that has a stanky attitude. That is correct. And I believe there is nothing worse than a bad attitude. How do you feel about that, Dad? I couldn't agree more. So as two positive people that like to focus on the bright side of things, we may have a different perspective than others, but I think that this is something that everybody can benefit from because a bad attitude can be a cancer or a horrible thing in an organization it could be a really negative thing in a family in a friendship Mm -hmm. so i think as we are all focused on leading more fulfilling and enjoyable and happier lives if you can identify it you can remove it i like that or change it because sometimes they can change so listeners i'm going to share something with you guys right now my dad has done coaching management coaching all kinds of stuff in his career. And just today, I've only been in management now in leadership for a little over three years, maybe going on four. And just today, he shared this whole manager's toolkit that he developed (laughs) years ago with me that has all of these pearls of wisdom. And I'm like, again, dad, nice to meet you. I know you've got all this wealth of knowledge and information. You, you would have thought, Why do you not share with me? <laughs> you would have thought I shared it with you when you got the you know promotions. Yeah, and all congratulations that, right? on your promotion. Yeah. Here's a toolkit that will give you all of the keys to your success. But no, we, we have to do a podcast so I could discover these things. So thank God for this podcast. Well, any, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, Dad, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. Because you never shared this with me before, we're going to use this episode as an opportunity for you to share your wisdom on what you've learned in managing and managing attitudes in your life, organization, whatever. Well, every one of you listening, have a positive attitude, period. Start off with that. And that sounds silly like, duh, you know, yeah, I should have a positive attitude. But I can't have a positive attitude because of, and we all have excuses around why we don't have a positive attitude. But I will tell you this, if you're managing people or if you are being managed and you don't have anybody below you, your attitude is critically important. Your attitude is what happens when people say, I don't know what it is, but I don't like him or her. It's generally around the attitude. And you could say, yeah, no, they're selfish or they're this or that or whatever. But if you have someone working for you, or a coworker. That well, that's has what a I was going to say. It doesn't have to be a higher higher <laughs> It doesn't have to be a hierarchical. <laughs> How do you say that word? Thank God for editing. Maybe we'll leave that one in. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be something that's in a hierarchy. Correct. No, seriously, you're, it could be your peer. As a peer, you're just a pain in the butt to work with because you have a bad attitude. If other people have to dance around you and we all know those people, Oh, oh, yeah, Christina, that's a great idea. Let's do that. Oh, wait, but how are we going to handle Paul? Well, even people, right, and people in your personal life that you can't be honest with, Uh or you have to, like, tiptoe and be really careful about what you say because you know that they'll take it a certain way or they're going to misinterpret the meaning. So it's really challenging to deal with people like that. So let's start as a manager and if you have somebody reporting to you. Okay. So you brilliantly in our last conversation spoke about how you have your motivations, what motivates you, and then everybody is different and we have other motivators, You know, they have their own, and that a good leader modifies or adjusts their behavior to match that of the motivation for their employee. In well, and it's to, not it's not right? matching as much as it's delivering. Adapting. I'm right. sorry, adapting. Adapting, adapting yeah. the motivator Good to point. appeal to whomever it is, right. is what we talked about in episode seven. Exactly. 
And I'll give you an example of a bad attitude is me when mom makes me take a walk. So that is a bad attitude. That's a bad attitude. And, and I, this is I a positive guy, but he has a bad attitude when I'm, it comes to I'm telling to... you, taking a walk. I don't like the beach, so I am a pain <laughs> in the ass to mom for the entire time. My... That is true. My only not fond memories of the beach include you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's and, true. But that's actually a really good example because uh-huh. there is no place that I am happier than at the beach on a nice day. Right. And my only negative memories that I have at the beach include you whining about being at the yeah, beach. So I was so great example. You detracted from my experience and at that's the beach. What it, exactly. Thanks Sorry a about, lot. Sorry about that. But that is an example, a perfect example of what a person with a bad attitude does. Dad, to do you everyone feel bad else. about how you impacted my childhood in a negative way there? Not really. <laughs> you, you turned out okay. No empathy. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, it's, it's pretty like hard knocks, right? Well, First world problems. My worst memories are you <laughs> complaining at the beach that you brought me to and paid for. It. <laughs> but think about this now. This is hard because I'm now being, you know, sliced open and examined. But my attitude caused you issues. Like it dampened your enthusiasm, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. You freaking killed my vibe. Right. But I am not <laughs> an unenthusiastic person. No, you are as positive as they come. Correct. Except... I was in a situation in which I'm very unhappy, which killed your vibe. Spilled over, correct. And there are people who are in jobs that they hate going to every day. It's yeah, or they're hard. not suited for. Or they're not suited for. So it's hard for them to have a really good attitude, right? I'll give you an example. I'm not going to name the, I always say this, I'm not going to name the company because I'm not going to name the company. But years ago, I did consulting at a client. These were managers. We were uh, mm-hmm. doing management training and it was, this was not part of the training. At a break, they're talking about this woman. Let's call her Susie. And Freaking one Susie. of the you know, one of the people said, "Oh, I got." And I, I literally was overhearing. We were having like lunch on this break. Oh, she got transferred into my department. Unbelievable. And they're like, "Oh, well, I, I'm glad I got rid of her. I'm sorry you got her," and so on. The story with this Susie was she was a completely unhappy person. It's such and a happy name. I know. Like they were Susie. <laughs> she was an unhappy Susie person. Susie sounds like she would be like a ray right. of sunshine. And not a good employee. Mm-hmm. And this company ha- at the time had a pretty much a mindset that if you work there, they would never, they don't fire people. That's a really positive environment. Well, you just would think move so. move them around. But think so. You would think that's positive. No, I, I don't. Well, okay, but I'm just saying <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice thought. We don't, we generally don't fire but people. But can you imagine if you went to work every day in an environment where you knew, regardless of your actions, regardless of how you show up, you have no possible repercussion of no longer being there? Well, and that was, so what happened was managers would tolerate this person and then plead with HR, plead with, and then they, they'd find a position and say, okay, we'll move you to this department. They were moving them, and literally one of the managers said, I had 10 people in my department, nine did the work, and they all worked around Susie, right? Yeah. My point in saying this is is that Susie was very unhappy. If Susie was actually fired like early on, she may have gotten into a company or a job that was more suited to what she wanted. Right. But she also had golden handcuffs. Not that she was paid all that much, but every year she even got just a cost of living raise. So it got to a point where Susie wasn't going to leave because was whatever she was motivated by may have, may have been the job and the money. She yeah. was motivated to make money she and provide. She needed money. And so mm-hmm. she's unhappy and all that. So there's a lot of reasons why people may have a bad attitude. Me, with the beach, I am not an unhappy person, but I was unhappy on the beach. Yet we still force you to go every year. I know. I'm unhappy exercise. I, I don't go to We've the We've like, covered the gym that. You don't that. like exercising. So <laughs> I just want to say that the reason I'm bringing that out is a person can have a bad attitude and not be a bad person. Well, I guess it's that a person can show up with a bad attitude, but not have a bad attitude innately. Correct. So you could be a positive person that reacts in a negative way to a mm-hmm. situation. Right. And the magic here is separating the people who just have a bad attitude and are just kind of 
a negative person in any situation Mm -hmm. from the people that are just reacting negatively to the environment that they're in. And then a step further than that would be identifying, can the situation change? And if the situation changes, does the attitude change? Good. Am I? Very good. Ding, ding. Was Was I right? Ding, ding. Good. Okay. Yeah. So I have a little, a little, I call it He's a got a whole tree. chart, guys. <laughs> He's showing me this chart, and I'm like, Dad, this is gold, and I could have really used this at different times. Thanks, yeah. bud. Yeah, anytime. Well, now you got it. So this is a decision tree for anybody who manages someone, but you can modify this for any circumstance. And so you could modify it for me going to the beach. You can modify it for anything. So let's say you manage this person, and, and you're having a lot of trouble with the person. First, you're going to look at the performance of the person. Does their performance meet your expectations? Yes or no? If it's yes, then you positively reinforce and you continue to enhance their skills, right? But if that particular performance does not meet your expectations, then that would be a no. Then you have to ask yourself, is the problem significant? And this is another issue. Very often, we pick on people for insignificant things. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's say I, with me in the band, I'm playing guitar in the band, and you are the boss of the band, and you have a problem, and it's the way I'm playing something. Is it significant? If you say to yourself, well, you know, it's not really significant. It's a preference that I would rather, but it's not significant. If it's not significant, then you ignore that problem. Okay. You can't pick on everything right. that somebody does, right? If it is significant, is the improvement within that person's control? If it's not within my control to improve it, then you have to remove the obstacles. Okay, so for example, I'm playing the guitar and you don't like the way the guitar sounds. Is it within my control? No, it's not. Like Be- you have an acoustic guitar and I need an electric. And you need an electric, right. So, so then so I need to change the guitar change that you're guitar. playing And with. we're making silly you know, examples, but you can see where this goes. Mm-hmm. So my office situation you know, might be the obstacle. It could be any number of things. But you have to look to yourself and say, is the improvement to this reason that I'm annoyed with Joe in Joe's control? If not, you remove the obstacles. If it is in my control, have I ever performed that task before? So you might have been annoyed with my performance, but guess what? I never did it before, right? It's something new. So then if I've never performed it before, then maybe shouldn't you be We got to teach you how to play the electric guitar. Yeah, or teach me how to set it up properly or show me or get somebody to help me, okay? If I have performed it before, do I have the knowledge and skills to perform up to your expectations as my manager, right? If no, then coach and train me to get me to that level of expertise. So in other words, if we summarize, did it meet your expectations? Would you like me to summarize? No, I don't. Not this time. (laughs) Is it significant? Is Is the improvement within my control? Have I performed in the past? Do I have the knowledge and skills? If all of those are the right answer, then... Is my attitude adversely affecting my performance? So you're ultimately getting to if the answer to all of that is yes, Mm -hmm. then it's an attitude problem. Correct. And if it's an attitude problem in a corporate environment, you should involve HR because we have to get to the core of why my attitude stinks. So now, Christina, if you'd like to talk about the beach (laughs) and me at the beach. We have an attitude problem on our hands. We have an attitude problem. Houston, we have Dad, a problem. <laughs> I will tell you the answer was yes to all of the questions. All right. So did and we it, land well, on the attitude. Except for the first one. Did it, meet, did it meet your expectations? Oh, no. the answer was no. Was it significant? Yes. Yes. Correct. Was the improvement within my control? Yes. Yes. You could have just put a smile on your face for a couple hours. Have I performed that task before? You have. Of course, absolutely. You do know how to go to the beach. And do I have the knowledge and skills to perform on the beach? You do. Yes, I do. You, you so, weren't actually built with the skin for the beach. No. You know, but, you burn like a lobster, but... 
but you do have the aptitude to put on sunscreen, a hat, and sit out there and read a book. Correct. So was my <laughs> attitude adversely affecting my performance? Heck yes. Yes. And that would literally be a counseling session. When I say counseling, not what a psychiatrist. So this is this actually brings us back to motivation. Right. Uh-huh. So what we ended up having to do is motivate you with things that you were happy about at the beach. So, for example, mm-hmm. Joe, if we go to the beach, we'll go visit Uncle Jimmy. Right. And you get to see your brother. Correct. Dad, if we go to the beach, we're going to go get ice cream. There you go. Oh, okay. Right. So Because what did I like at the beach? I, I was never happier when we finally got off the beach, came back to the hotel room, took a shower, got dressed, and we were going to go to the boardwalk and have some nice food. You know, the boardwalk type food. Not, yeah. Not four-star restaurant food, but the fun food. Right. And ice cream and rides and stuff like that. That was a lot of fun. So you can help to provide the incentives at the end of something that is very unpleasant Mm -hmm. to help improve the attitude. Right. And I think with the right motivation, you've improved your attitude. We've also improved our approach to just leaving you in the hotel room. I was going to (laughs) say, you you grew up and I didn't have to accompany you (laughs) (laughs) to the the beach anymore. It's silly, but that's an example of how you can look at these situations and figure out if it's something that you can coach to improve and address the fact that the attitude is a problem Mm -hmm. and can we work around it? Can motivation and something that incentivizes you change that? Or do you just need to be removed from the situation? (laughs) Like we removed you from From the the beach beach completely. Well, and that's where, if you think about this and put this back now to business, the counseling side, counseling, again, as I said, it's not a psychological counseling. It would really be you as the manager would refer me to HR or so on, but the HR person would try to get to the core, right? In this case, it would be an example of me being in the wrong job. Right. Okay. I am not cut out for, nor do I enjoy, just sitting on a chair sweating on the beach. And by well, the and way, if you listeners, go back to episode six, you'll yes. know why, because he has a uniform, which he wears <laughs> to the beach, and jeans a button down and a belt are not beachwear. Well, I'm going to now, I'm going to get off the serious <laughs> topic here and I'm going to give another Joeism. Oh gosh. Yes. Oh God. Where are we going now? The beach is an anachronism. So let me, let me say that. I know I'm going to get an anachronism. Yes. Yeah, so the word anachronism is something that's out of place, out of time. So if you watch a, a movie from like a Roman gladiator and there's a wristwatch on his hand. That's the, the wristwatch would be so an like the Starbucks cup in the Game of Thrones scene. Exactly. It does okay. not belong. It's out of place. Before we had air conditioning and refrigerators and all that, in the summer, it was very hot. You're aging yourself again, Dad. No, I don't remember those days. <laughs> That's before my time. <laughs> oh, okay. But think about this. Are you sure? Think about this. It was hot, especially if you lived in the city and you're on the sixth floor apartment and it's 90 degrees outside and your apartment's 110 degrees. So you didn't have air conditioning, you know, 100 years ago, no air conditioning. You didn't have a refrigerator. It was an ice box. Because your great grandfather mm-hmm. was an ice man who delivered ice into these ice boxes. Yep. So what did you do? Either you went out into the street and opened the fire hydrant and tried to go in the water there, or you went to the beach, which made sense because you would be on the beach, you could, you know, put a bathing suit on and cool off in the water. We no longer Can you need imagine to do if this. You were living we back no- then? Oh my God. But do you understand? that you had no option but to go to the beach for relief. So are you saying that you do not understand the beach if not to need <laughs> relief? So you're saying Take you don't understand a world with air conditioning why one would need the beach? Why <laughs> should I leave my house, which has very comfortable chairs, couches, stuff like that? I have a refrigerator with anything I possibly want to eat. You actually don't and have anything you possibly have, want to eat in your that's refrigerator. That's a separate story, young lady. <laughs> because my wife is real healthy. Um, And I have an air-conditioned environment in which I am not uncomfortable. Why would I want to make myself uncomfortable? And then I hear, well, if you get hot on the beach, just go in the water. Well, why would I have to be hot on the beach to go in the water? Because, Dad, part (laughs) of growth is pushing yourself past your comfort zone. That's into a danger zone for me, not a comfort zone. So I had, to, I, I had to explain that. This is what I tell everybody. Now it's now public on a podcast forever. 
mm-hmm. out online forever. That that's my analogy for uh, why the beach is stupid. You know, and then people go, "Oh, the ocean We're is gonna beautiful." We're going to agree to disagree. It's the same here. water coming back. The wave comes over and over and over. After a few minutes, Dad, w- aren't you done? I'm shaking my head here. Yeah. So you're such a simpleton. I know. Your world is so small. <laughs> I forgot about the TV in the house, and you got the Wi-Fi and all the other stuff. Yeah, he'd rather watch a beach on TV. No, I wouldn't watch the beach. I no. I wouldn't watch the beach. So anyway, I just wanted to say Dad. that. But now if we go back to our topic, that is... I'm very thankful I didn't get your mentality on these things. I know. So the Apple did nudge itself yeah. a little bit, a little bit further God. away. But think about that decision tree in any aspect. If it's a coworker, if it's your child, if it's your father on the beach. What do you do? Do you if, fire your kid? What no 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 I didn't say fires but you have to understand know, okay. the Aren't you happy you never had to deal with a negative attitude from me? Never you've been perfect as a child. Right? Yeah, she's perfect. I've just always been such a ray of sunshine. Yeah, excuse me while I get up and throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe from what 11 to like 17. <laughs> You were probably like calling HR on me. <laughs> you would have been in a lot of counseling sessions for those yeah. six years. Yeah. I really impacted the culture of the that's, family that's negatively correct. during yeah. those years. Yeah. It's kind of like what you delivered to the beach experience was exactly what I delivered to your Washington, D.C. experience. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> what he loathes about the beach, I, in my it's early so- high school years, hated about history and sightseeing. Right. Christina really does not like history or I don't know. I mean, I now, but, I enjoy yeah. it now to, but we, in, we in went, doses. When she was younger, the whole family went to Washington, D.C. Instead of going to the beach, right. mind you. I was thrilled because that's my type of vacation. Historical places or cities, you know, like cultural stuff, historical things. Anyway, we went to Washington, D.C. I'm thrilled. And I love this. I'm a history buff about the Civil War period. And so I bring the whole family to Ford's Theater, which is where Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. And we are and literally. And this guy was like sitting. a pig in shit. He was in love. I've never Correct. seen his eyes so lit up with just happiness. Correct. And pride at all he knows about the situation and the fact that, like, this is where Abraham Lincoln was. And what John Wilkes well, I, Booth, uh, what's uh, his name? Uh, John? <laughs> you, you have it right. John Wilkes but... Booth hopped up on stage and he <laughs> shot him right there. He's like, right where you're standing. And I'm like, Dad, can we leave? Exactly. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. I stared at her. I was like, this isn't a replica. This is it. This is where it happened. <laughs> I was like, okay, I get it. Can we go? Yeah. The floor's creaky. <laughs> right. She threw the wet blanket on my experience yeah. on that trip. I Ooh. feel your pain now. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I get what that I delivered it. there. I yeah. apologize for that. That's quite right. So that's the point, though. That was an episode where you are a great kid and you were unhappy because you were just bored out of your mind and right. that meant nothing to you. Mm-hmm. And these are some of the things we may have to, either we have to or we have to help that person uncover why is your attitude bad because the people aren't bad. It's just the attitude. Well, and I think it's also a good lesson that we just kind of taught each other through sharing these experiences. (laughs) And I think it's a lesson in life, in marriage, in friendships. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to do things that you don't love and that you are not 100% happy doing Mm -hmm. and that don't necessarily fulfill you. But sometimes you make little sacrifices as long as it's not the majority of your time to make other people happy too. And I think whether that's in work, like sometimes you have to just change your attitude And the way that you approach a situation so that you can help a team flourish, help an organization flourish, or Mm -hmm. help your family. Right. And yourself. And friends. And yourself. And yourself at the same time. Well, and, and I mean, positive attitude. I think about it like this all the time. You can change the way you look at a situation and completely shift your overall demeanor and perspective. Mm -hmm. If you dwell on the fact that you're on the beach and all the things you hate about the beach, you're going to just exude complete negativity. But if you focus on the things that you're going to do later, the fact that you're with your family, the fact that it's a nice day and you've got a book that you like that you're reading and you can get ice cream later. Or if I focus on the fact that, okay, well, you're happy and look at how elated you are to be in this Mm -hmm. environment, this theater, and just put a smile on my face for the hour, five hours. It felt like we were there. (laughs) like a hundred hours to you, right? (laughs) But that can just change your own experience too. So 
being able to change your mindset and focus on positivity is something that I think brings you a long way. Wonderful. All right, Dad. Any final thoughts? No, I am now, I'm sure, embarrassed and exposed for the. uh, What do you say we go to the beach? (laughs) No, let's end this now while we can. It's a beautiful day. Let's go take a walk, Dad. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. Go out and put a smile on someone else's face and turn your attitude up a little bit this afternoon. There you go. Thank you. Wherever you are, Whatever your story, thanks for spending time with us this morning. Now, go and make a difference in your world. If this little ditty isn't an attitude enhancer, I don't know what is. Love it. (laughs) It's a happy little tune. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening.